insisted. But remember what I said, first sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump, don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer. That's how you say it, right? Interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in the scary negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> at her lack of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usually, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. What? Marianne McCulloch. Mc... 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 What? I... Mc... Oh, fuck. McCulloch... Uh... <laughs> my throat! I can't say it! Correctly. I mean... I could probably say correctly, but... My throat hurts. And I don't want to... Really do that accent. Or... The roll of the... T oh boy. I'm just gonna call it Marianne. Whoa. Xmail.com, eh? Interior designer. Oh, I like the rose. Uh, the words interior designer catches my eye before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably some, someone interested in mansion for its 17th century influence in Zen. I, want to, I won't hold it against her. Despite the hearsays and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original feedings and furniture has been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past feeling appealing. After all, what, with what it offers, this place could also be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and then I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blur out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash, flash of irritation crosses her face, but it is inst but it instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Ah! Uh, suddenly Rose nudges me with her shoulder? Or elbow? Oh. Oh, is this my time to shine? As a real estate agent? Uh... I think this is the right choice. I, I don't think she'll... We'll be professionals. Right? Hell yeah! Uh, no professional with Marianne. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am. But we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. If you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly in deep thought after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person. Anyway, 
Given the proper explanation, she'd surely understand. I thought something looked odd when I arrived here. Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job, and I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxburn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if, for some reason, something had already been decided without my or no Rose's knowledge. That's a whole new level of unfair! We've been working hard on this. I, I thought she was going to say bullshit, but I guess that's my word. <laughs> Moments later, Marianne returns, looking a little frustrated with a clear... Oh, with an apology clear on the face. I feel a little sorry for her for going to have to, uh, for having, for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You could stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her wristwatch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with it a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think about what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as, as loose, isn't as elusive as it normally is. And then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any calls from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind begs to differ. And... If I am going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more to them to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in this house and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have just handed me dig into my palm, its jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I'm clutching it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer close to my body, uh, I exit the house to get what Rose has asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. Oh. Okay. Get scared about the mansion. That was a lot of blood. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nines of fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors compose a medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and glo gold. Gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpi magpies living nearby and like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. They are murmuring among themselves looking at the estate's facade appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. But most of the stops most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Hearing this, a few wandered toward me. They are mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Marianne also joins the- Whoa! Boobs! Sorry, that's the first thing I noticed. Uh, Anna and Luke. 
They look really young. They're like rich kids. Rich kids. Wait. Maybe they're like brother and sister? I'm sure we'll figure that out though. Uh, Marianne also joins our group, but what really c catches my eye the elegantly dressed pair she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you. When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you. Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Ah, they must be the clients she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before some magazine or the television, I can't quite remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others and in their simplicity the couple stands out the woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group especially the men with wandering eyes the guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind though and if i'm going to be a bit bolder about my assumptions i'd say he's basking in the attention both of them in fact i think they were brother and sister if it wasn't for their public dis oh Oh, my only sunshine. Ah, they are a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is that we get the deal closed before the current owners can even think of canceling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so with papers in hand, I lead the way. Ah, oh, fuck, we're back. It is so soon. When they aren't whispering among themselves or going ooh and ah over, over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answer them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxborn knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... thing... colorful ones... Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Uh... Uh... What was it called? Stained glass windows, right? Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention is all already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, ma'am. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. What? I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Ah, oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Oh, crap. Is that... Ooh, basement? Or maybe a wine cellar? Maybe a cellar. With wine. Oh, actually this is... When you think about it, this place... There's no... There's no stove! Where's the stove? Much well, like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put into retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room in particular looks amazing. Oh, is that it? A light like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. 
and mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of the complaints about the soot and tar staining the bricks and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable, at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh boy. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. Oh, is it? This is the first time the guy in gray speaks up. Mr. Luke Wright. My memory supplies from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lights up in his eyes at mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now, he just gives me the impression of a child who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whatever, whenever I see children act this way. My younger siblings especially. On a grown man though, it's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Fuck! That's a lot of wine. Truly. And the room, how was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Uh. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Holy shit. Perhaps you could start one here. Holy shit. A, a vineyard? You know we're going to need space for that, darling. That's a lot of... That's a lot of space. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. Oh. There's plenty of room for it. That's a lot. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. What the fuck? There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, Hour, seems really pleased that he starts to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! Can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny, the first time BRC had to survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over the possible sale? Wow. Okay, I didn't... I mean, the first thing I noticed was the illustration and then... Ah, uh, the ambience. Why is it creepy? When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts off as a small goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing lurking in every corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down my spine making me sick and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I can't do this. I need to sit down for a minute. Uh, the old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just- Excuse me? Everyone? We- We will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. I mean, maybe Isabel is a bit mal malnourished from all the cup noodle eating. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone with a good while, the same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. Don't think about it. Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello. Oh, you fuck. There? You scared the shit out of me, lady. Y yes, ma'am. Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? Hey, didn't we just go over this? With Marianne that they didn't sign? 
My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? He looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... You see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... Wait, is it just in her eyes money is not a problem? Because she's so fucking rich? She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as though she has tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. Oh my god, it's exactly that. And, just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. I know a person. I'm not gonna say their name out loud, though. I know a person who has a lot of cats. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. That's a lot of cats to fill an entire mansion. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Oh my god, her ha name changed to Ma'am Hannah. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. Oh my it's god. It's going to be our anniversary soon. Holy shit, that's a huge ass gift! And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. Ooh. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> His voice se sounds very familiar. I just don't know where. What would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to wince when she, her nails dig into my shoulders. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss oh, Marianne, who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shovels through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry for letting me her for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. Oh my god. It's Isabella. Oh boy. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors, too, and... What's this? Oh, no! How did that get there? Isabella? And today is not a good day. Oh, a look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, she merely shrugs in reply. That's... Uh... An interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, Buttercup, art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful. As the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. Damn! You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. Even you? But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this form. It's my turn to be puzzled. What do they mean? Rose and I double checked everything. Are they. are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. How do you not notice this? Oh, wait, she doesn't remember. Uh, 
And with the way Ma'am Han Ma Hannah, Ma'am Hannah is leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of the, what she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter, in my hands. Besides crinkle in my grip and my breathing grows labored, dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more to say than, no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place, because I remember everything as clear as day. This letter and that woman in the attic, it's real. The letter? I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless, I've been so careless. How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Oh shit, hold on. Did, did the letter say something about show this to five people or, or something? Oh, wait, how many people have seen it so far? Uh, so I've seen it, so that's one. And the three people have seen it, so it's Marianne, Ma'am Hannah. This is gonna go call her Hannah. And what's his name? Luke. One, two, three, four. So if I show this to Hannah, what will happen? Oh, I want to show it to Hannah. I don't think I should. Oh, shit. I'm going to keep the relationship. No, wait. She's not here. Oh, fuck. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Because... I don't know. Why isn't she on the relationship meter? If she's... That's weird. I'm going to show it to her. Wait. Marianne went down? Wait, what? Is that what happened? Oh, I can't even tell anymore. I blurred it out before I could even think twice about what I'm gonna say. Rose, we need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Oh, that's not what I wanted to say. Rose casts a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in the conversation with their peers, but those curious enough to turn their heads in our group's direction have been have been Given her trademark salesman smile, a tight expression is on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. And I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not... it's not human at all. He's not gonna believe you. I thought it was just nothing, but... isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches out to pluck the paper off my hand. And without even taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Look, I'm really getting worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Wait, she, she didn't even look at it. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. Wait, what was the point of the, the option of showing her it? Wait, did the op other option, like, she took it by force and then looked at it? No, no! You don't understand! There isn't a condition, Rose. No concussion at all. I'm fine. But this place isn't, and you're being stubborn about it. Did I mess up? Somehow? Or did I get through this, luckily? Somehow. Oh, hello. Before Rose can open her mouth for a retort, a hand lands on both of her shoulders, pulling the two of us to a distance closer. Now, now, ladies. What seems to be the problem here? Nothing, sir. I just had to clarify a few things with my colleague. I have the same eye color. Well, it certainly seems... intense. A smile fits the two of you better, in my opinion. Especially darling little Lily here. Okay, that's... Okay. 
Okay, he gives my shoulder a gentle squeeze while an inscrutable smile spreads across his... Uh, is he like a player? It's Isabella, sir. Of course, of course. But my point still stands. And with two beautiful ladies here, I'm sure. Dude, you're married! And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate <laughs> it if you remove your pretty hands from her, <laughs> darling. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> 